When I was 17, just a quite St. Patrick's Day evening around 9 p.m., I found myself babysitting my little cousin at her house. My sister and her husband were out drinking, since it's St. Patrick's Day and all. As we sat there, something felt off, a strange sensation creeping over me. I couldn't quite pinpoint it, so I tried to distract myself by watching TV with my cousin. But the feeling persisted, nagging at me until I couldn't ignore it any longer. I got up to lock the back door, and upon returning through the kitchen, I saw what had been causing my unease. There, in the window, was a haggard, homeless-looking man, peering in and fixating on my cousin. Protective instincts kicked in. I acted like I hadn't noticed him and calmly told my cousin that it was time for bed since her parents would be home soon. Upstairs, I tucked him in, all the while knowing there was a man outside who wanted in. At the time, I was about 125 pounds and 5'8", a volleyball player for my school. Recalling the situation, I dashed downstairs and grabbed a meat tenderizing hammer from the kitchen, heading back to the window where I'd seen the man, but he was gone. Rushing to the front door, I confirmed it was locked tight. Returning upstairs with my makeshift weapon, I stationed myself in front of my cousin's room, instructing him to stay quiet and low. I called the police and then my sister and her husband, but help was still some time away. Suddenly, a window shattered, followed by heavy footsteps downstairs. I urged my cousin to stay calm, hiding under the covers while I braced myself with the hammer. I could hear the intruder moving about, a chilling experience. Gripping the hammer tightly, I waited, feeling like my heart might burst from my chest. Then, the sound of boots on the stairs. Panic surged through me as the footsteps grew closer, the intruder checking each room downstairs before ascending. He reached my aunt and uncle's room, then the bathroom, before heading back downstairs and toward the basement. Fifteen agonizing minutes later, the police arrived and stormed into the house. The intruder is about to lunge at me when a police officer apprehended him on time. It turned out the intruder is a very drunk homeless man who was too wasted to know where he was. It is one of the scariest experience I've ever had. When I first moved to America, I didn't know much about St. Patrick's Day. Sure, I was familiar with American culture, and growing up in Hokkaido, Japan, I was vaguely aware that St. Patrick's Day existed, but I had no idea it was taken so seriously by Irish Americans. So, my first March 17th as a student at Boston University was certainly an eye-opener. I remember waking up that morning like any other day. I threw on some clothes, ate a small breakfast, then headed down to Boston Common to catch the tea to the university library. It was only then that I saw just how enthusiastic Boston was over St. Patrick's Day. Almost everyone I saw had some item of green clothing on. Even smartly dressed businessmen had little green pocket squares or four-leaf clover pins. I saw big groups of kilted men with bagpipes, and even people dressed as small red-haired creatures, though I couldn't recall the word for them at the time. Yet amidst this festive atmosphere, my encounter took a dark turn. As the train stopped and let on more passengers, one man immediately locked eyes with me. I silently prayed he would leave me alone, but to no avail. He reeked of alcohol, and I could barely stand the stench. Ignoring his attempts at conversation, I put my earphones in, hoping to signal my disinterest. But he persisted, poking me in the arm and slurring his words. Why wasn't I wearing green? I pretended not to understand, hoping he'd back off. Instead, he grew louder and more insistent, even resorting to pinching me when I failed to respond to his satisfaction. The situation escalated, with other passengers becoming outraged at his behavior. Fleeing the train, I was shaken but determined not to let the incident ruin my view of Boston. Later that day, as I headed back to my apartment, I received a text from friends inviting me to join them at an Irish bar near Government Center for some green beer, a tradition I'd never heard of. Despite my reservations, I decided to go, curious to experience this unique American celebration. As I walked to the bar, I passed by a tea station and saw the last person I wanted to encounter. The drunk man from earlier, now even more intoxicated. My heart pounded as he recognized me and began shouting, chasing me down the sidewalk. Terrified, 
I sought refuge with a police officer, who kindly escorted me back to my apartment. Reflecting on the day's events, I couldn't help but wonder how different things might be if alcohol weren't involved. Back in 2018, it was just about a month after I got my driver's license and my buddy Eric and I were looking for something to do. So we decided to cruise down the pike, you know, that long stretch of highway with all the bars and clubs. Before we hit the road, we stopped at a convenience store to grab some snacks. That's when this older lady, really thin and kind of scruffy looking, comes up to my car. She had this lazy eye that was all over the place and she asked if I could give her a ride to the liquor store a couple of miles down the road. Now looking back, I realize I should have said no, but back then I was just a dumb kid, so I said sure. Eric hopped in the back and the lady got in next to me. As we drove, she started asking us all sorts of questions, like where we're from and what we're doing out on St. Patty's Day. Then out of nowhere, she asks if we're looking to party. I tell her we're not, but she doesn't seem to believe me. She starts talking about her friend who wants to party too, and then she asks if we like Hispanic women. It was all getting pretty weird. It took me a minute, but then it hit me. I think I just picked up a prostitute. And if that wasn't bad enough, when we pulled into the liquor store parking lot, there's this guy in a pickup truck blocking the exit. He starts yelling at me, telling me that the lady in my car is bad news. Turns out she's been asking guys to buy her booze and take her to a motel down the road. I'm freaking out, thinking it's some kind of ambush or something. But luckily, the guy in the pickup turns out to be on my side. He helps me get the lady out of my car, and she finally takes off behind the liquor store. I thanked the guy a million times before he drove off. Needless to say, I learned my lesson that day. No more picking up strangers, especially not on St. Patrick's Day. And you better believe I steer clear of that Wawa around this time of year. You never know what kind of craziness you might run into. I hope you found these stories as chilling and unsettling as I did. It's a stark reminder that sometimes reality can be stranger and more frightening than fiction. If you enjoyed these tales of suspense, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more spine-chilling content. This is your host, Nicholas Black. Until next time.